Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, I ask that you come and go with us. The Old Testament, the book of Jeremiah. The Old Testament, the book of Jeremiah. I ask you to walk to that 18th chapter. Walk to that 18th chapter. We're going to ask you to stand to show reverence to God's word, please. Walk to the 18th chapter. Jeremiah. We'll begin reading at that first verse. It says, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise. And go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter. To make it, you may be seated. Amen. We'd like to use that as a thought today. I'm in his hands. I'm in his hands. I don't know about you, but I'm in his hands. One of the most versatile parts of our of our body are our hands. And our hands can be tender and accurate enough to to paint a picture, to thread a needle, to play a guitar or a keyboard. They can they can be strong and and powerful enough to swing an axe, move heavy objects, vacuum a floor. Our hands are two of the most important natural tools that we have. And we use them in almost every aspect and every capacity of our daily lives. And we we really take for granted the usefulness of our hands. And because we 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 do realize sometimes how important our hands are, we try and keep them safe. Our our hands and we don't think about it this way. Our hands are fearless. Because they'll go any place that that we send them and they'll act only as as wisely as you want them to act. We we stick our hands in places that that we're afraid to go. (laughs) Amen. So our hands are fearless. Our our hands are intelligent. Our hands can tell us when something is hot and they can tell us when something is cold. They can tell us when something is smooth. They can tell us when something is coarse. They can tell us when 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 something is 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 soft or they can tell us when something is is hard. Our, Our hands are intelligent. Our hands can point someone who's lost in the right direction. Amen. Our our hands can 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 write a letter on a piece of paper. Our hands can type out a document on a computer. Our hands can do so many wonderful things. The most important feature about our hands is 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 that we 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 trust them to grasp on or to hold on to something. We we can hold our babies in our hands. We can hold our books in our hands. We can hold our bags in our hands. We even hold our Bibles in our hands. And depending on the size of the object and the strength of our hands, whatever we are holding can be pretty secure, especially when it comes to money. 
<laughs> y'all can smile about that one. Amen. Because y'all know some of us can hold on tight <laughs> when it comes to that mighty dog. <laughs> Amen. Our hands are important to us. Will you agree to that? Our hands are important to us. And to be able to see them and to feel them can give us a sense of power and security that we have the power to do some things because we have mobility of our hands. And it gives us that it gives us a sense of control that we can do certain things. We can move certain things. Amen. And I said all of that to make it relate to what I want to talk to you about today in this little Easter speech that I'm in his hands. I, I'm, I'm in the hands of the Lord. And we know that that God is a, a pure and an infinite spirit. Jesus told the woman at the well that they, that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God does not have any kind of human physical characteristics. Are, are y'all with me? But the Bible, the Bible will attribute human characteristics to God. The Bible will give God human features sometimes. And in his wisdom, God wanted his his children to 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 to, to be to, God wanted to be real to his children. So God sometimes himself gives himself human features. Are, are y'all are y'all with me? He wanted to be someone whom we could hold on to, whom we can grab, whom he could touch us. So he gives himself human features sometimes and and, and he describes himself in, in physical images. When the Bible represents an understanding of God using human characteristics, it's called and get this term anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism for those taking notes, that word is A-N-T-H-R-O-P-O-M-O. P-H-I-S-M, anthropomorphism, a amen. <laughs> I can over there laughing like, no, don't even worry about it, pastor. <laughs> amen. Anthropomorphism, it comes, from, it comes from the Greek word. It's a combination of two Greek words. The first one is anthropos, which means man, and the second word is morph, which means form. So when those words are put together, if you went to if you went to college and you in your in your core classes, you probably took a class called anthropology, which is the science or the study of man. Morph is also part of the word metamorphosis, which means change or form or change of form. So when you put anthros or anthropos and morph together, you come up with anthropomorph anthropomorphism, anthrop anthropomorphism, which means having man form. Are y'all with me? Amen. See, and there are many places in the Bible that use anthropomorphism to help us to understand how God works with man. For example, in, in some places, God has a face. And we know that God is a spirit and God does not have a face. But but in Leviticus 20 and 6, it says that that he sets his face against the evil. And in Numbers 6 and 25, it says that God makes his face to shine upon us. Are y'all with me? In certain parts of the Bible, it says that God have arms. In Psalm 89 and, and 10, it says you scatter your enemies with your mighty arm. And in Deuteronomy 4 and 34, it says that God has his arms outstretched. In Psalm 34 and 15, David says that the Lord has eyes. It says that the, that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. In 2 Kings 19 and 16, it says that the Lord has ears. It asks in a prayer, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. In Isaiah 66 and 1, it says that the Lord has feet. It says, the Lord says this, that heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So anthropomorphism is used all throughout the Bible. And then there's references in the Bible that says that God has hands. 
In fact, there are 122 references that says that God has hands. And we understand how, how our own hands are so important in expressing our love and care for one another in a touch or in a caress or in a protective hold. And the image also tells us just how much our creator, our God, is important and we care about us. In the book of Genesis, God creates the heaven and the earth by an act of his will. God came out and said, let there be. And all of this stuff came into existence. A -a Amen. Let it be light. Let the land come up. Let the, let the water be separated. Let the animals come forth and this and that. And God did all this by speaking the word. But then when it came down to making man, God said, let us make man. Man was not spoken into existence, but man was made with the hands of God, showing how tender we are to God. One of the psalmists saying, what is man that God should even pay attention to him? We, we are we are we are one of the most we are the most important creation that God did because God took his time to come down and form man with his hands and not only form man with his hand. He blew the breath of life in man to become a living soul, which gives us connection to God. And I've all and I've also we've talked about the name of God, which is Yahweh. A amen. And, and those two symbols, those two syllables, one means that you exhale and the other means that you're inhale. So every time you take a breath, you're saying the name of the Lord. So we're in his hands. We're in his hand. God cares for us so much that he's promised to never let us go. Amen. He's attached himself to us. Amen. God says that the Bible says so. God says in Isaiah 49 and 10, he says, behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are ever before me. In other words, God said that 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 I, I, I see what's going on with you. So you don't have to fret. Don't be afraid. Don't get discouraged. Don't lose your mind because I got you in the palms of my hand. God is saying you are engraved in the palms of my hand. So I can't let you go. Are, are y'all with me? One of the first songs that we learned to sing when we were little children. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. Y'all don't y'all. Yes. Which means that he's holding us in the palm of his hand. Amen. And here in our text today, God is illustrating to his prophet how he has us in the palms of his hands. God tells Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house. I don't want you to say a word. I don't want you to, dis to disturb him. I just want you to observe What's going on? So Jeremiah did what God said and Jeremiah went down there and Jeremiah saw the skill and the wisdom of the potter as he formed and, and fashioned the vessel of clay on the potter's wheel. Can't you see it where the potter's wheel is going around and the hands of the potter has the clay in his hand? And through all the twists and turns and the, uh, of the rotating wheel, the potter never takes his hands off the clay. Uh, are y'all with me? The artistry and, and the skill of the potter was, was used to shape and to mold and to form and to complete whatever vessel that the potter wanted to make out of his wisdom. And if the clay happened to, to, to mess up or to get ruined in the process, the potter didn't throw it away. He would just refashion it into another vessel, a, a good vessel, something that, was, that seemed right to the potter. Are y'all with me? Well, some of you may be thinking about, well, Pastor, what this got to do with us making pottery? 
OK, let me give you an explanation of it. And then we're going we're going to do. So so what is God showing Jeremiah? Look at what this picture represents. The potter represents God. Are, are y'all with me? The potter, the potter represents God, the father. The clay represents God's people who are in his hands. The potter's wheel represents life with all of its twists and its turns. And no matter how much or how fast the wheel turns or how fast or how much life comes, the father always keeps us in his hands. It doesn't matter if we get marred or messed up along the way. God doesn't discard us. He doesn't throw us away. He will only make us over into something that he wants us to be. I heard Paul say in Philippians one and six, he said, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, what God has started in me, God will finish it one day. And why? Because I'm in his hands. Amen. Nobody, nobody else's hands. So, so touch your neighbor and tell him, stop looking at me funny. I'm in God's hand. Oh, that's the wrong one. Touch him on the other side and say, stop looking at me funny. I'm in the Lord's hand. And since I'm in the Lord's hands, I have discovered that there are some benefits for being in the Lord's hand. God, God, God gave me five benefits for being in his hands. And I'm going to give you these benefits and then we're going to finish this little Easter speech. Amen. Amen. And when the, when he when he gave me these or showed me these five benefits of being in his hand, all of them was found in that fourth verse of chapter 18. All five of them was found in that fourth verse of chapter 18. Look at this. Look at this. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. So I see five benefits in that. Y'all, y'all don't see them. Let, let, okay, not yet, not yet. Amen. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about them. the first thing that I see. The first benefit I see is protection. The vessel is in the hands of the potter. In other words, we are protected because we're in the hands of the Lord. Boy, I wish I had some help in here. I told you last week. In Psalm 46 and 1, it said that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. God is all knowing. God is all encompassing. God is all powerful. David says in Psalm 27 and 1, he said, the Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? How do I know that I'm protected? Because I'm in the hands of the Lord. Amen. One psalmist says that he's my shield and my buckler. Another one said that I can run to him and he can hide me. So as long as I'm in his hands, I know that I have protection from the enemy. Can I get a witness in here? So that's the first benefit. I'm in his hands. I know that I am protected. The second benefit I, I see in being in his hands, I have sufficiency. Everything needed to make a good vessel is in the potter's hand. Boy, hey, yeah. I think y'all missed that. Everything needed to make a good vessel is in the potter's hands. <laughs> the Bible says, this verse says, he made it into a vessel as seemed good to the potter to make. It. The vessel did not and could not make itself. So everything that was needed to make that vessel into what it needed to be was in the potter's hands. 
So everything that was needed was sufficient for that vessel. Uh, are y'all with me in here? Amen. It was dependent upon the hands of the potter to be made. You can never be a self-made man. You can never be a self-made woman. You are in the hands of the potter. Can, 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 can I get a wit? We, we, are, we, are, we are his people and the sheep of his passion. A amen. David said, David said that the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. Why should not want? Why should not be in need of anything? Because whatever is in his hand is sufficient for me. I heard Paul backs it up in Philippians 4 19. He said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Which means that everything that I need is in the hands of Boy, I wish I had some help up here of the Lord. If you need love, God's got it. If you need joy, God's got it. If you need peace, God's got it. If you need deliverance, God's got it. If you need a healing, God's got it. If you need hope today, God, God, God's God's got it. A -a -a Amen. And all of it is in his hands. Amen. When Paul said, when Paul knew that God wasn't going to heal him when he had asked God, he said, God, he said, Lord, I, I, I don't know why you're not coming. Jesus told him that my grace <laughs> is sufficient within me. You got everything that you need. So 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 that's another benefit. I got protection. I got sufficiency. Now, now, I want you to listen to this third one, because some of you may not consider this a benefit. In this fourth verse, another benefit is trouble and trials. Some of you are looking at me crazy because you're saying, well, how can troubles and trials be a benefit? Because if I didn't have troubles and trials in my life, I never would have known how good God is. <laughs> if I go back to Psalm 46 and 1, he is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in trouble. When I got in trouble and when I was going through my stuff, if he didn't deliver me, he was right there with me. So it's a benefit being in his hands. Can I get a witness in here? A a a amen, amen. When, when, when we look at this troubles and trials, even in the hands of the Lord, we're going to have some hard times. I told y'all that last week. Even in the hands of the Lord, we're going to have some hard times. Because the verse says that the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Now we got to look at that word, that key word, marred. To be marred means to impair the appearance of. It means to disfigure. It means you don't look like what you used to look like. Because of something that you've gone through. It's messed up your appearance. So what you're saying, Pastor, sometimes in life, situations and circumstances will not have you looking or feeling like a child of God. If you hadn't faced anything like that, just keep on living. Because you'll go to some things, you'll go through some things that'll have you not looking like a child of God. Can, can I get a witness in here? Afflictions and, and troubles and trials and tribulations and, and, and sin is included can cause our appearance as a vessel of God to become marred or disfigured. Mm. But through it all, 
We have to remember that we're still in his hands. And if we remember that we're still in his hand, we can be like David in Psalm 51 and 12. David says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And then Jesus told Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Paul said, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Look at what Paul says. Paul says, sometimes in life, I'm going to be messed up. But as long as I know that the Lord has his hands on me, I know that everything is going to be all right. Because when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. So I got protection. I got sufficiency. I got troubles and trials. All of it in the hands of life. I said there were five of them. Number four, what did I find? I found that there was mercy in the hands of the Lord. There's mercy in hand. Look, look at what the verse says. The verse says, so he made it again. Y'all missed that. Let me, let me say it a second time. The verse says, he made it again. After it was marred, after it was messed up, after it was disfigured, he made it again. He could have got it when it messed up and said, I'm tired of you and threw it away. He could have trashed it. He could have destroyed it. He could have discarded it. But he didn't do that. He made it again. And when he made it again, notice this, he made it again. He never took his hands off of it, no matter how messed up it got. <laughs> how many times have we messed up in God's hands, but he didn't discard us? He didn't throw us away. He didn't trash us, but he just made us again <laughs> not a second time but a third time and a fourth time he kept his hands on us he showed us mercy he gave us mercy he gave us mercy we just we just we just recited this in Psalm 105 when it says for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting. You got to understand, I don't know about you, but I give God thanks every day because his mercy lasts longer than my marring. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus! Boy, I wish I had at least five or six folks in here. I'll be number seven that will, that will testify that every now and then, even though I'm headed to heaven, I still get marred along the way. Thanks be to God, I'm still in his hands. That's mercy. That's mercy. Jeremiah says in Lamentation, every morning we wake up. Our mercies are renewed. He gives us new mercy because he knows somewhere along the line we're going to get marred during the day. That's a benefit. That's a benefit of being in hand. Let me give you the fifth one. Let me give you the fifth one. I'm, I'm through. I'm, I'm almost through. Let me give you the fifth one. The fifth one. In his hand, being in his hand, the fifth benefit I found is there is salvation in his hands. Where, 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 where'd you get salvation? Right, right, there, right there in the text. It says, it, says, it says, he made it again another vessel as seemed good 
to the potter to make it. Not only did he he show it mercy by keeping his hands on it and not throwing it away, but he made it into something better. Y'all, 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 y'all missed that. Yeah, yeah. Even though it messed up in his hands, he didn't let it stay messed up, but he changed it into something better. Boy, y'all don't know when to shout. Woo! Boy. How was this talking about? Sal? The clay started out one way, but it ended up another way. The potter made it into another vessel that could be used in his service and accepted by the potter. Okay, I'm done. I, 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 I'm done. Paul summed it up in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. So my brothers and sisters, I might not look like how I should in your eyesight. I might not be who you think I should be in your eyesight. I might not even be where you think I should be in your eyesight. But there's one thing I know. I'm still in his hands. So all I ask you today is please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. God is not through with me yet. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, when God gets through, not you, not my mama, but when God gets through with me. I shall come forth as pure gold. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Let's stand. How many of you know you're still in his hand? I don't care what you did last week. I don't care what you did last night. You're still in his hands. There are benefits 